good afternoon to everyone. Maybe for some of you, I should say good evening or good morning, depending wherever you are. Uh, I thought informing you that this session will be recorded and only speakers will be visible in the recording. To all participants who will not uh, speak in this plenary session, I ask you to kindly uh, turn off the microphones. After this preliminary information, I have to tell you that as professor of the University of Algarve and a researcher in the field of hospitality management, it is a great honor for me to introduce you to Steve Hood, who is the keynote speaker of this session. Steve, uh, is a senior vice president of research of STR. He has been with STR for nearly 25 years and was involved in the original development of the STAR program used by nearly 70,000 hotels and almost all hotel companies around the world. Steve is the founding director of the SHARE Center, that is the STR's program to support hospitality and tourism education with over 1,000 schools involved from 80 different countries. And Steve serves on advisory boards and as an honorary professor for leading schools, including the Cornell, the Pennsylvania State University, the Ecole Hôtelière de Lausanne, the Hong Kong Polytechnic University, among others. Steve has also been recognized with several industry awards and by the hotel schools of distinction with his, for his commitment hospitality and tourism education. Steve, before I give you the floor, I would like to thank you for being here today and for giving us an interesting talk about utilizing hotel data to maximize tourism intelligence. Steve, the stage is yours. Luis, thank you very much. And it's great to be with you. Uh, Jafar, thank you uh, again. We've tried to make this happen for years now. So uh, on, on, uh, at Good news, bad news. It's uh, one of the uh, advantages of our current situation to uh, be able to join you. So great to be with you. I'd like to share this uh, today on um, the topic is utilizing hotel data to maximize tourism intelligence. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. If everybody could be sure to put their uh, put their uh, microphones on mute. Uh, if you join in, that would be great. Uh, can everyone see my presentation? Utilizing hotel data to maximize tourism intelligence. Uh, again, my name is Steve Hood. Uh, my uh, email address is right there, shood at str.com. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, we have 25 minutes. Um, excuse me. I wanted to be sensitive to that. I'm going to start the timer. And... Uh, and... Uh, this is our agenda. Um, it, I, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to make this PowerPoint available to everyone. So there's a lot in here. So it's, uh, you know, cover certain areas, but there's more in this PowerPoint as far as the resource is concerned. So we'll make sure, uh, we'll try to make sure everybody gets a copy of this. A uh, real brief intro, then jump into STR and hotel STR data available for research and show you some tourism research examples talk very briefly about other ways we support academia and then we'll stop because really you know my whole goal is to find out from you folks how we can better assist and how we can promote better research uh appreciate uh, the the uh, session so far today you know we are right on there right on track with those um Somebody needs to uh, mute. There's still someone uh, whose microphone is not mute. Could everybody double check to make sure their microphone is on mute? Okay, real quick, STR by the numbers. This is just a quick introduction to our company. Hopefully you're you're familiar with our company. We collect data, hotel data all over the world. 70,000 hotels around the world participate. Almost all the chain chains around the world do send us data. Uh, 
our business, our goal, our business is just, we, we provide that data back to hotel companies that use that for benchmarking. We provided the thousands of tourism organizations from UNWTO to the local organizations as well. And then all the consulting firms use our data as well. Now, obviously they pay for our data. The good news is academics do not. And, and that's through this program called the SHARE Center that I launched in 2011. SHARE stands for supporting hotel-related academic research and education. It's our way, it's SDR's way to give back to academia and to support academia. Our mission is to provide universities all over the world with large volumes, different types of hotel and tourism data for research, student project use in the classroom, as well as related resources, which I'll briefly mention to you. We launched this program back in 2011. We thought at that time, maybe 50, maybe 100 schools might be interested in working with us. Never in our wildest imagination did we uh, think that we would ha- be working with over a thousand universities in 80 different countries. We appreciate, we've worked, uh, we work with uh, professors at University of Algarve, but we want to deepen that relationship and, and, uh, and work with more faculty there. It, it's our way to give back and, and committed to bridging the gap. And that's where Jafar and I just connected and, and instantly. And, and so that is our goal, bridging the gap between industry and academia. SCR collects a lot of hotel data. These are examples of different types of hotel and tourism data that we collect. Our most popular type of data is this performance data. I'll show you an example of that. We but there's also pipeline data that's hotel openings and closings new development construction p l accounting data somebody uh, one of the speakers before mentioned profitability at this point in time and uh, mario you mentioned that and that was you know that that's the type of data we collect as well lots of other different types of data industry statistics um, destination report hotel census data forecasts uh, sales data forward-looking future reservation food and beverage meeting uh, lots of different types of data now I'm going to show you a, a quick example of probably the most popular type of data that we collect. This, there's nothing sexy about this data. This is just monthly performance data for a sample market. Uh, look at the metrics, occupancy, average daily rate, revenue per available room, supply. Now, that's the rooms available in this specific city. Demand are the rooms sold, and revenue is the room revenue that we uh, that we obtain. Now, for each of those metrics, we have the actual value and then the percent change compared to last year. And of course, we have that data for it's monthly, so that data can go all the way back to the 80s or the 90s up until just last month. September is uh, is where we're actually. Uh, yeah, September is where we're at right now. So you see that data over time. Like I said, nothing sexy at all about this, but think about what you can do with it. You take this data, like in this case, occupancy or average daily rate, and you can look at the trend over time for this particular city. Of course, you take that data that we provided in Excel, copy and paste, and boom, you get a graph like this. Occupancy is blue. You see that occupancy go up in the downturn. Occupancy went from 66 down to 54, and then it recovered up to 74, and then dipped down a little bit down to 73. Average daily rate for this particular city started at 70, almost 75. Did go down a little bit during the downturn, but then has recovered now up to 150. Nothing, nothing, uh, you know, no rocket science here. This is just raw data that, that, uh, you, we convert to uh, graphical and, and, and it's telling a story. Just like monthly data, daily data is available. The same exact. Need to, can everybody? I'm sorry. Okay, great. Uh, daily data is available as well. Same exact metrics, but of course, the time frame here is daily data. Now, this is daily data during a special event in this particular market. Again, we copy and paste the occupancy and the average daily rate. We bring it into a graph, and what do we see? We see what happened, this particular market uh, 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 
hosted a, a sporting related event and you see it didn't really impact the occupancy but look at the green line had a big impact in average daily rate the average daily rate for this city city went above 200 us dollars during this particular time so again this this data is simplistic nothing sexy about it but you see the <laughs> You see the power of data when it comes to telling a story. We try to make it as easy as possible for schools to obtain data from STR. Again, the data is used for academic research, for student projects, for use in the classroom. A professor can request data for any user-defined group of hotels. They can ask for data for a country, for a city, for a specific type of hotel. I want to see luxury hotels in Lisbon and uh, or selected properties. They can ask, let me see, uh, see all the hotels in the Algarve that participate, that submit data to STR, will show them that group and then they can request specific hotels because they might be looking for, you know, a specific type of resort boutique type hotel and, and they want to narrow it down. Totally user defined. The data that they get, of course, is the average of the group of hotels that they select. We're more than glad to provide samples and, and we're more than glad to work with you, talk about your needs, your research needs and assist with you. Uh, we make the data as easy as possible to work with. You get the raw data in Excel. We provide it quickly. Uh, you get current data, so it would be just as of last week or last month, and it will go back as far as we have, which in most cases is back to the 90s, in some cases the 80s. And again, anywhere in the world, we get data from close to 200 different countries. So we'll be glad to uh, uh, help you with uh, any kind of needs that you might have. Our goal, of course, is promoting academic research. There's hundreds, almost thousands of examples of academic research utilizing STR data. We do, professors, make unidentified property level data available, and, and we can talk to you more about that and, and how, we, uh, how we do that. It is It does have to be unidentified, but we can include categorization fields. And of course, the value there is it allows you to correlate third-party data or your own survey to the hotel performance. And I show you just a couple of examples. One perfect, you know, we, and we do this hundreds of times, but a professor correlated TripAdvisor review data, and they focused on data uh, tr reviews related to technology to the performance. Another one, uh, another professor correlated airline data to performance. Another professor correlated gender diversity. This was a great survey that a professor in Switzerland did. She asked all the hotels in Switzerland, how many uh, leadership positions do you have within the hotel? And then how many are uh, filled by women? Uh, and then we co and then she correlated that to their performance. Guess what she found? If the hotel had all men in leadership, eh, their performance was low. If they had all women in leadership, though, eh, it was low as well. What hotels had the highest correlation with good performance? Diversity, 50-50, those hotels outperformed. Now, I know that's a little bit more hotel rather than tourism, but you get an idea how we can correlate performance data with uh, with your survey. We're available to discuss needs. We love to brainstorm with you. We do research roundtables around the world. And I, I, I lovingly refer to this as hospitality and tourism research match.com. Because we work with so many professors around the world, if you have an idea that somebody else is working on, we'll ask you if you want us to introduce you to a different professor working on the same thing. Now, we'll let you make the call on that, but we're more than glad to connect you. So these are just examples of some academic research topics uh, that, that we've worked on before. You can see it's it's just wide range of, of different topics. Here I have some research case studies in terms of specific high profile examples. There are quite a few in here related to tourism as well. I'll be glad to share you the complete list if you'd like it. But the key to emphasize the research opportunities are countless. Now, the, 
the image that you're looking at there is an iceberg. And, and a lot of times I'll refer to refer to that because when it comes to research in a lot of situations, it's really, you know, we're, we're hitting the tip of the iceberg. There's so many other opportunities. And I, I list examples of those opportunities here uh, that, that readily come to my mind. Other things are going to come to your mind, and that's really the most important thing. We want to know what you're thinking about, how we can help, and and how we can support your research. Identifying misconceptions, uh, co- connecting to third-party data, event impact analysis type data, um, different type comparing different types of hotels or different type of business, uh, comparing different events, comparing different areas, markets. So lots of opportunities here, and we'd be more than glad to uh, talk with you more about that. Let me show you, if I if I could, and we're doing good on time here, let me show you a few examples of some tourism research just to, to try to help you understand that. I know if you have not worked with our data, it's a little hard to understand, but that's why we're more than glad to send you samples of reports and data and, and talk with you on the phone, webinar for your faculty, any way we can help. Here's an example in China, and, and uh, what we did here is we compared different uh, – cities in China, and we look at the demand growth, so that would be rooms sold, growth by the city tiers. In China, uh, we separated the tier one and the new tier one cities from the tier two through five cities and compared their growth over time. So here we're looking at a percent change. You'll notice at certain you know, back in 2013, the tier one cities were outperforming the higher tier cities. But then in 2014, the tier one cities actually uh, out. Oh, and then tier. And then they also did that during the 2014 time frame. But look at 2016, it shifted. And then at that point in time, the tier two, the higher tier cities, the smaller cities actually outperformed the larger cities and have done so up until the current time. Here's another example of uh, looking at Olympics, and this compares three different Olympics, London, Vancouver, and Beijing, uh, and it looks at the premium average daily rate. You see here, Beijing had a much higher premium when it came to average daily rate than the other two cities. Uh, From an occupancy point of view, though, Vancouver was the winner. Uh, again, this is uh, this would be daily data for that time frame that we're that's being looked at to uh, to uh, come up with that story. Here's an example of uh, uh, the oil spill that hit Florida back uh, uh, quite a while ago, uh, and and again very, uh, you know, lots of misconceptions when it comes to tourism. Everybody thought that this was going to be uh, an incredibly disastrous event for the hotels. And indeed, it, you know, there were ecological implications. But from a hotel point of view, it was actually not a bad event. Well, you know, we help your students understand in an event like this, who comes to town, the emergency workers, the cleanup crews, the media, the government, everybody comes to town in a situation like that. And that actually showed an increase in business. And and, uh, so you get the study impacts of things like this. This is um, a a slide that came out of some work we did with UNWTO uh, and and, uh, with uh, uh, UNESCO, World Heritage Designations, and what was the implication, you notice uh, the inscription date when they became a World Heritage Designation, and then what happened in that particular market after the inscription date. We did that for about 100 different World Heritage sites. Here's the impact of a hurricane on the Caribbean, the countries in the Caribbean, plus uh, markets in the United States related to that. You see uh, you see 
coastline areas negatively impacted, but then you see in evacuation impact and, and flows and, and where uh, people evacuated to in those areas. Interesting, you saw, you know, some countries very negatively impacted, but a country like the Bahamas, an island like the Bahamas was actually positively impacted uh, during this uh, during this hurricane. Here we're addressing uh, over tourism in, in uh, a particular uh, market, and, and we see uh, implications uh, related to rooms sold, rooms available, and average daily rate. Terrorism impact, uh, unfortunate uh, part of our uh, culture or part of our world today, and and you see, very, here we compare ten different uh, terrorism instances and the time it took to recover from those uh, from those events, and you see some uh, cities had very little impact, some recovered within a, a, about a year, and and some took much longer to recover. Here's the value of a sporting event, and uh, you see that uh, uh, all of our data has, all of our hotel data has latitude, longitudes involved uh, to do any kind of geospatial type of thing, the uh, research that you might be interested in doing. Uh, here, very simple. What's the impact uh, of an Olympics event on uh, from a revenue point of view? And and here's uh, this is actually part of one of our training programs for students and and uh, we show them how to uh, estimate the impact from a, a revenue point of view this was uh, of course uh, in billions of dollars in rubles uh, just another example events like a lunar eclipse that had a major impact on specific cities in uh, the US but the, the interesting thing about this most of these were small tiny cities that saw re you know increases in the range of 250% when it came to a uh, a, a uh, you know natural event like this uh, religious events, easy to analyze. And here we're looking at the impact of uh, uh, Ramadan on uh, the city of Dubai. And uh, interesting to, uh, you know, the, the, as I said, the, the opportunities are countless here. And, and those are just a few examples. Now, uh, I have a lot more of uh, examples in the end of the PowerPoint that you can look at. We are more than glad to talk through these examples and show you uh, uh, and, and discuss your specific needs and relate these back to your specific needs. Good. A couple of the other ways that the SHARE Center tries to help academia and help bridge the gap. Uh, this is one way. We have a, a program with our sister company. If, if, uh, if you're not familiar with hotelnewsnow.com, it is a international media uh, service and, and totally free. Uh, we do work with them and make academic research available in this publication. So professors that do research that's, uh, that's relevant to the industry, you simply submit that to the SHARE Center. We put it, we, we submit it to the editors of Hotel News Now. The good news is those editors will work with a professor and as we joke about, they'll translate the, the research from academic jargon to industry practitioner language to make sure uh, that we're sharing an executive summary or an industry takeaway and then that gets featured in hotel news now the testimonies we get from researchers researchers are incredible it's being uh you know that that research gets in front of thousands of practitioners and and they get great the dialogue uh as i think jafar mentioned this the you know, it's a challenge to, you know, to get these, to get academia and industry communicating. This is just one small way that uh, that we that we that we're working on to try to help bridge that gap. Not forgetting your students, we have uh, a, a number of training programs and student certifications that are focused on big data and analytics. We support schools and we help them offer these training programs and these certifications to students. Students can obtain uh, one certification is called the Certification in Hotel Industry Analytics, the CHIA, 
We launched that in 2012. You can see that's been obtained by over 26,000 people. Now, that's both students, professors, and practitioners. I'm sorry. We need uh, we need somebody to mute, uh, put their put themselves on mute. And um, so that chia we make available. Uh, again, these are industry recognized stamps of approval. They're sponsored by the various companies that you see at the bottom. Your students can add those to their resume, so their name is no longer Steve Hood. It's Steve Hood, comma. Chia, and they can put that on their resume, really helps your students stand, stand out. All of our certifications have projects and exercises that the students complete, and they can bring those to their interviews. I can't tell you how valuable it is when your student pops open a laptop and says, hey, look at the project I did last semester at University of Algarve, and, and we get great testimonials from your students. The outline uh, or some of the contents for the Chia is is uh, included on the slide and then last year we la launched the certification in advanced hospitality and tourism analytics called the CADA. This is where students learn how to do the four most popular re hospitality and tourism research projects. They learn how to do a market study, an event impact analysis, a feasibility study, and an economic analysis. If any of that is interest to, interesting uh, to you, please don't hesitate to reach out. We are working with schools to help provide an internship alternative. We know that a lot of internships have been impacted by the COVID crisis, and we're working with schools to help them provide an alternative where students gain hands-on experience working with data instead of, unfortunately, hands-on experience working inside a hotel. Let us know if, you, if, uh, if you'd like to talk more about that. And then one other way, we do provide competitions, and uh, we've been doing competitions for five years now. Um, last year, we did them all over the world, New York, London, Hong Kong, and Mexico. This year, we're doing a virtual version with 50, te 50 uh, teams involved. So those are just other ways that we can help. And uh, uh, that's a little bit more before uh, I have two more. I have two minutes left before I leave you here. Let me just show you at the end of this PowerPoint. When you get it, there are going to be other research examples. Then there will be a global industry update. Now that's one of the things we do on a regular basis around the world. We do in you know updates on how the hotel industry is doing. Of course, a lot of interest now related to COVID. We do a lot of that. You can see. Uh, you know, here's China. Here's the China recovery that everybody's focused on. Uh, certain areas like the Mid East and U.S. are sort of stalled. Here's Europe and uh, uh, Europe and Africa. And here I brought in Spain and Portugal just because I knew people would be interested in that. Uh, there's lots of data in here related to how the recovery is doing. Where is it going? Staycations in Europe. You guys know that had a big positive impact. And uh, here's countries in Europe. Uh, we, we're seeing a lot of uh, 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 a lot of increase. The regional markets are doing much bigger, th better than the gateway cities. Here's uh, a little bit of Spain and Portugal that by class of hotels, Asia Pac, U.S. There are bright spots in the storm. This is a presentation I did uh, a couple weeks ago for a university. If any, if any academics would like that presentation, please let me know. You know, people think eh, all all the hotels around the world are doing awful. There are a lot of hotels that are really uh, thriving and doing well in the midst of what's going on. And then at the very end, I have uh, examples of other types of data that we have available and that we make available for academic research. 25 minutes. I think I nailed it. So uh, that is uh, uh, that's it. I'm going to stop talking. Thank you, Steve. You gave us a very interesting talk which showed the huge potential of uh, granular data, hotel data for research and a clear, a clear linkage between the industry and the academia and how the puts of research mind form hotel manager in order to improve or maximize their revenue. We are running off, out of time, but I think that we have time for one or two questions. Does anyone uh, have uh, questions? 
If I may. Yes. Steve, uh, thank you very much uh, for your uh, contribution. Uh, what is uh, unique about you, very special about you, you're a very proactive person. Uh, sometimes when we try to get the speakers uh, that, are, that are not available, uh, it's not going to work, et cetera. Yours is always positive, uh, very accommodating. I thank you very much for that. Your presentation is a uh, good example of bridging tourism theory and practice or transferring information or manipulating, yeah, that's not the right word, you know, making data available for different purposes. And I was impressed with the range of data that you are dealing with. And I want to go to one specific one in here, and that is you talk about the gender balance uh, in hotel business. And you give the example of, I think it was Switzerland. That's very impressive. But before I ask my question from you, um, here you mentioned that balance was the right recipe for performance. So here's the, the situation. Um, as you know, the ratio is changing. Right now, 54% uh, of all employees in tourism are female. Point one, is this number is going to increase. We know that for sure, for sure. How do we know that? Look at our, uh, our classrooms. When I started teaching, I had 25% female, 75% male. It's the opposite today, not in USA, everywhere. And sometimes I've seen it 90%. So see, very soon the balance is not going to be there. Are your data, do your data have the power of projection into matters, intangible matters like this? Now, that's a great question, um, and and you're absolutely right. This is uh, this is a great topic. This was uh, a Professor Sawan Kim from Lausanne uh, who d who did this research. Anybody want an introduction? I'll be glad to give it to you. Um, and she would like to expand it. She did this research on Switzerland. She'd like to go beyond and and, and do it further. Um, we, you know, that's an example where we don't have that type of gender diversity data, but her survey did. And, and that's, you know, so a lot of times in situations like that, it's a matter of triangulating, taking data that a professor has or can, can, uh, can, can generate and we can help when it comes to surveys because we have email addresses of hotels. Now they're generic email addresses. They're not the, the we can't share the private email addresses that we send their data to. That's, they view that as confidential, 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 excuse me. But that's where we can help triangulate. And even in the case of projections into the future, if we find one, you know, think about it. If we find hotels that have an overbalance in one direction or another, for, as far as gender is concerned, then we could look at historic data over time. Are they are they improving? Are they uh, are they learning to work in those new uh, uh, ratios? Uh, and uh, so that's an example where we're more than glad to brainstorm and, and try to figure out ways to work with academics to say, well, how can we project that into the future and figure out maybe how to uh, answer that question or solve that problem? Thank you. Um, we are running out of time, but I would like to ask a question to Steve. Uh, you uh, showed um, a slide with a, a list of research topics and another slide with a shorter list of uh, research opportunities. My question is, if we were starting uh, research now to develop cutting edge knowledge for the hot hospitality industry, which research topic would you select first? Well, that's a great question, uh, the, and 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 I don't pick the topics. I'm really responding to professors who who come up with these. But what do we see in recent? Obviously, we're seeing a lot of topics related to COVID, um, recovery. Um, you, you know, I'm just uh, one one professor is saying, okay, if a hotel closed and then reopened, did it tend? Is it going to potentially outperform in the next several months a hotel that stayed open? 
You get the idea. Now we have all that opening and closing data. So, so we're uh, showing them, you know, in a, in a particular market, all the hotels that closed for a period of time and comparing their performance to the hotels that remained open. Um, think about a group and transient that was brought up. You know, we can look at, group data we track that separately so we can compare you know hotels that had a major emphasis on group business prior to covid you know the challenge for them right now is having to reinvent themselves you know now it's a totally different customer now they're catering to the drive to the domestic customer how successful are they going to be and uh, are they able to do that think about um outdoor tourism that came up in one of the uh, presentations you know hotels that that have a heavy heavy reliance upon outdoors tend to be outperforming uh, hotels that are in big cities. Think about the Algarve. I mean, the Algarve has been a, a, a great bright spot as far as tourism is concerned. It's a drive to destination from Lisbon and Madrid. It, it, you know, it's a bit of a, you know, it's a it's a beach destination, but a little more remote. Uh, I joke in the U.S., you know, Miami Beach doing awful. Myrtle Beach, which nobody has ever heard of unless you live in the U.S., doing fantastic. So, all kinds of different possibilities here. And uh, as I said, it's really the t- tip of the iceberg. We are more than glad to to uh, spend time with you, jump on a call, jump on a webinar and, and brainstorm with you. We'd love to do that with T Forum as a community. Uh, as I said, Jafar and I have tried to make this connection for, uh, for a long time. We'd really love to be more involved. We do research roundtables. Some of those are topic based meeting and events, uh, uh, accounting, you know, and, and economics. So we're more than glad to to sit down with a group and, and discuss uh, research opportunities and, and help any way we can. Thank you. Before I close this session, I'd like to thank you, Steve, uh, for your contribution and the audience for attending this session. I would like to invite all of you for attending one of the paper sessions that are starting in uh, parallel rooms. So thank you for all of you. Bye-bye, Steve. Thank you. Thank you, Luis.